Joining us now on the Oakland County Megacast is Wes Graff. He is the president for the Plymouth Community Chamber of Commerce. Wes, thank you for being with us on the Friday edition of the Megacast. Ronnie, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So, uh, Plymouth is one of my favorite cities. I love the walkable community. How are things going in uh, the area right now? We're doing okay at best, I would say. Um, you know, we're a big restaurant town, so when the restaurants um, can't have indoor dining, that slows us down. Um, I am really pleased, though, with uh, last weekend, we had a greens market filled with uh, um, vendors from our farmer's market and small business Saturday, and the, the town was packed. So really proud of, of people in the Plymouth area for coming out and enjoying that. Because there is a big push right now to uh, support local. I think we saw it even more so for the restaurants and the bars in the beginning of the pandemic. And I'm wondering, are we going to see that same excitement from the community to support some of these small businesses during the second pause, as they're calling it right now? We hope so. We're really, uh, we've started a campaign here called Revive and Thrive, where we're pushing businesses um, or pushing residents, I should say, of, of not just Plymouth, but our area, because really a lot of us here in Western Wayne use each other's services and really throughout the whole metro area to shop local, to dine local, to use local service providers, and to support local nonprofits. But with that, uh, to, I, I'm, we're going into the winter months, Wes, and with that, uh, these are tough times for the restaurants. And the winter months, can they survive? Like right now, it's not bad, you know, 30 degrees uh, this weekend in the 30s, 40s. That, I think people will go outside and enjoy the restaurant experience still. But I think about like January, February, where it's like, you know, zero degrees. Can these restaurants survive if they still have to do the outdoor dining situation? It depends on the restaurant. It depends on how their landlord's working with them um, and other service providers to them. You know, in, in Plymouth, we're known for this. We're known for our ice festival. And um, when we go about town, you know, during the ice festival, people don't care. They still hang out outside and enjoy the party um, that is the evening of the ice festival. So, you know, I'm seeing some of that right now with the restaurants on the patios. I'm hoping to see at least that portion of it. Um, when it hits anywhere near 40 or mid 30s, people are willing to go out and, and sit by the heaters and, and eat too. So, and there's a lot of days like that. So, uh, you know, they're gonna do the best they can. It really depends on how well prepared they were for this going into it. And if they have the resources to keep themselves going. We're fortunate so far. Um, most of our major, actually, yeah, I think almost all of them, except one of our major restaurants has really kept going throughout this. Yeah, those it's those little small neighborhood bars and restaurants that you start to worry about during this because some of them too, just due to their location, they weren't able to set up uh, some of these outdoor patio uh, types of situations. So we'll see how they do during this as well. Uh, with that, Plymouth is kind of also known during the holidays for all of your holiday events. How has that been impacted this year? Are things being canceled or just reimagined? Um, only one that has really been canceled and it was reimagined is uh, we had a Santa house that we pulled in every year. Uh, and Santa is still coming to, Santa's coming to town, but through Zoom. And we have people signing up to do, because uh, we've had this, our Santa has been part of this community for over 20 years. So, um, we want to keep it, you know, we're going to give the kids an opportunity. A lot of times some of their parents have gone to Santa and now they're taking their kids to see Santa. So it's a fun experience for them. We'll keep that going. Um, we have, we used to have a big celebration when Santa came to town that was reimagined and Santa came in on a fire truck and just visited all the community parks around town. Um, we do still have our, our, uh, our Christmas tree walk, uh, which is called the walk of trees in Kellogg park that's still going strong. So we're pleased to have that. And, and that's brought a little bit of Christmas back to everybody this year. So are those trees already set up, Wes? Yeah, the trees are set up. Um, they were lit. They were turned on by Santa on uh, on Friday night. So we're off and running with that this year, which is and, and it 
it creates a really nice atmosphere here in Plymouth. So if one wants to sit out on the patios, which it's interesting, the restaurant owners said, I didn't think that anyone would really want to do this. And then as they were going along, they found out they did. So last Tuesday, our city commission agreed in downtown Plymouth to continue the patios, actually throughout, well, throughout all of the city of Plymouth, um, to continue those patios on, on the public property um, private property can, you know, could already move ahead with that. And so it's great that uh, people are embracing it, the cold and getting out there and enjoying it. You know, we're, it's kind of like, we're Michigan, bundle yeah. up, you know. Uh, every, I think they're here to stay for the future. I, I expect we're going to see outdoor patios every year going forward. Yeah, but with that, um, this year, have you heard from some owners that haven't been able to get some of the supplies? There is a shortage of the heaters out there right now. And then I wonder, how's it going to work with some of the restaurants that have those tents? Because a tent is cute and it's nice, but what happens if we get a huge snowstorm? We don't have, we, they're talking about putting canopies up here. We don't have tents in most of our areas. Um, a few places have the igloos, which are made for this. And, and since they're a dome, the snow slides off of them. Um, but they are looking at some, they're looking at some sort of covering over the top of them. Most of the ones have heaters already. They had bought up heaters long ago. So we, we would, that one seems to be covered by most of our restaurants. So that's why I can't get a heater right now. <laughs> right. You, yeah. The commercial, yes, the commercial, the, yeah, the commercial companies have purchased them and are selling them for a pretty good price to, uh, to businesses. It, so um, I'm glad you brought up the igloos because I think they're adorable. They started, um, you know, popping up a couple years ago with mm -hmm. a few restaurants and now it's pretty much standard for so many of these uh, restaurants. But when it comes to this health order, how does that work? Because it's still an enclosed space or so from a health standpoint, they're still allowed though. They are still allowed. You're supposed to dine with people who are in your family or your pod and they are actually putting them into. And so the, the, there is an opening to them. The amount of time a server is in there is limited. Um, and so they've gone ahead and allow the igloos uh at this point west graf with us here on the oakland county mega cast he's the president for the plymouth community chamber of commerce what else is uh going on there in the city of plymouth then how have you guys been able to help some of these businesses well um, i'll mention a few things you know our, our our downtown development authority is doing a downtown shopping contest so if you spend over 50 dollars and you email them the receipt you go into a drawing for a $25 um, Plymouth gift card that is good at uh, 150 locations in Plymouth and Plymouth Township. And then they are doing the same thing now for restaurants again, and they are doing a Takeout Tuesday contest. So if you spend over $50 in a restaurant and you and you send them a copy of the uh, of their of your receipt, you're up for a $25 gift card that also can be used. So, you know, that's one of the ways we're trying to uh, to encourage business. Um, I mentioned our Revive and Thrive campaign that we're running. We have um, 57 businesses that sponsored it. The money is going into using, we have a very large following on social media, including 25,500 on Facebook. Um, and so we are using some of those funds because it's one of our most effective ways to get the word out the door to people, um, reminding them that the businesses that they have so enjoyed are part of the quality of life of this community that they contribute significantly when asked with gift cards, with donations. And now it's our time to step up for them. Um, so we're encouraging people to, uh, you know, you know, to in a real push to shop locally. But then we also are highlighting things like our historical museum, uh, which does have a historic first ladies exhibit right now with them with them all dressed up for Christmas. Um, but we, you know, the, there's so many things that are part of our quality of life here. And they also um, need our support right now, too. So if you buy a gift card, because you can use them later, if that's supporting the Michigan Philharmonic or supporting the Penn Theater that people love, there's so many options um, for people. 
And then locally, I should mention, you know, the, the safety net for our area is the United Way, which is local. And when I say local for Western Wayne County and also our Salvation Army, and they work in tandem. So important for people to also give to that. And the same thing within, within your area of Oakland County, it is essential that we take care of the people who unfortunately right now have lost their jobs, often the service workers and the businesses that we're talking about, like restaurants, we've got to help provide them a Christmas. Yeah, you you wonder about so many of these uh, restaurant workers, especially the ones that uh, maybe have another job, but they relied on that second income to help supplement uh, some of their expenses as well. And now that's gone away for them. How are they going to make it through December with the holidays coming up? Uh, Wes, just another couple minutes here with you on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, before we let you go, do you want to talk a little bit about the importance of organizations as such as yours during this pandemic and trying to bring these businesses together? Yeah, it, you know, our role has really changed a lot. I mean, we used to have a lot of meetings where we would get people together um and network now we provide some opportunity to do that online but probably the biggest thing that we do is provide information now um you know one of the things that's helping these businesses get through and we really do need our federal government to step up and support the businesses that really are not able to fully open right now and support the workers to put some money back in their pockets so they can spend that out there that's you know that's also hurting businesses right now so if we can get you know, some more money into the into the pot to do that. It will really help. But we provide a lot of information for our members about the changes that keep occurring, the restrictions that are put on to help us get through COVID, what they have to do. Um, and we have gotten more feedback that that is, that is the most important role that we have played so far as the information provider, um, which is a bit of a change for us. We're more of a convener. And I think we've really shifted a lot to be more of an information provider and then to bring people together uh, we have an online mall on our website and other ways to promote. We, we really take community promotions seriously here because we have a great community to promote. Um, and we would encourage anybody to come down and, and just kind of walk around and enjoy it for a night. Um, do a little shopping, just enjoy a day in Plymouth. Yeah, get outside because I do feel like sometimes when we're outside, it's like an escape uh, from yeah. COVID in this pandemic. Uh, Wes, with that, uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the grants that are being made available to the businesses and how hard of a process is it for some of these smaller businesses to get some of those? You know, the MEDC just um, is announced that they're doing a new grant that will apply to the places we're talking about, restaurants, gyms. Um, gyms are just hit so hard. I know that we've forgiven the dues of our members who are gyms this year because there's just no way they can make it. But there's a new set of, th th there's a new uh, $10 million grant program for them that has just come out. Um, hopefully another round of CARES Act money that's out there. You can work with your banker on those PPP loans. There's other loans that are very easy to get if you just submit your um, information. I know. Wayne County here was very supportive of a lot of businesses um, who received grants and the application process was really quite easy. Um, so, you know, they're, they're trying to work with you, everybody is, I think, to make this a go. And they, at first, the applications were more complicated. You still have to have good books and good records. You can't go in there with nothing. But if you can produce, if you can show a loss, if you can show that you've been, if you can show you're in one of those industries that's really hurt and you are specifically hurt, there's opportunities for funds. Yeah, you know, what's been sad is uh, hearing about some of these business owners or individuals that have uh, taken advantage of that system and kind of scammed the system because that is money that other people really need and other businesses really need to stay afloat. So uh, let's. I, it seems like the second round, they've gotten a little bit smarter about trying to spot yeah. some of that fraud so it can help more people and more businesses. The last round, they did a good job of getting money in the hands of the people who real. the first round, I mean, not that the people, in the, many of the first round needed it, but that second round really got to those, those, I, you know, there's small businesses and there's micro businesses and the second round really got to the micro businesses. That's who doesn't have the deep pockets to get through this. And so that was a real plus for for everybody. And, and I, I saw so many businesses that really deserve those funds to get them in that second round. And hopefully this next round, we can do the same thing and prioritize those that are the, hit the hardest by COVID. 
Exactly. Well, Wes, it's always uh, great to have you with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Plymouth is such a cute city. Uh, and like you said, it, it's the quality of life. These shops and these businesses bring such a u- uniqueness to our cities that we need them to survive this uh, economic crisis and uh, because we want them around for when we come out of this. Right, so come on down and see us this winter at any point, not just during the holidays, you'll have a wonderful time. Exactly, break out the gloves and put on an extra layer of, of long underwear and you'll be okay. Yep. Well, Wes, thank you so much.